Do pets have souls? That's our topic today on Wednesdays with Rilla. This is a weekly podcast show that airs on Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. Eastern on my Facebook page, Willa White Medium. Also goes out on the Lilydale Assembly Facebook page. It'll be uploaded later to my YouTube channel. And you can, if you want the listen-only feature, you can go to blogtalkradio.com slash Lilydale Radio. I'm part of the Lilydale Radio family, so there are shows that happen throughout the week, so I encourage you to take a look at those. And you can also check out the Lilydale Assembly uh, .org website if you'd like information about upcoming classes and workshops, events that happen in the off season. And then when our season hits, June 23rd, people are gearing up for that already. Uh, hopefully we'll have the program ready for you in the next couple of months so you can make your plans to visit and enjoy us here in person at Lilydale. And I am blessed to have back on the show again today, Margaret Ferris. Hello, mm-hmm. Margaret. Hello, Rilla. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. On a nippy morning in Lilydale. It is. Yeah. It's, it's, the, the cold has returned. We had a few days of sunshine that were like pure bliss as far mm-hmm. as I'm concerned. Yes. I was able yes. to lift my face up and feel the warmth of the sun up. I, I have crocuses coming up. Oh, wow. I, I told them, go back in. Yeah. <laughs> and they're only <laughs> half an inch. Save yourselves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll be covering them again. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So Margaret Ferris, for those who don't know who Margaret is, she is a Lily, wonderful Lilydale resident. You've been Thank a you. volunteer for many years, but mm-hmm. also a registered Lilydale medium. Thank you, yes. And very uh, much supportive of Lilydale, its programs, and you've served as a spiritual healer as well yeah, at the you, Healing yeah. Temple. And uh, for the Church of Living Spirit, people may recognize Margaret's music, her yes. beautiful music. Thank She's you. The, yeah. the church organist for the Church of the Living Spirit here in Lilydale. And mm-hmm. it's, it's such a delight. She, she's got like a little musical flair that she is able I do love those little flares. Yeah, yes, yeah. I do. They, they kind of tickle you and, and delight and uh, lighten things. Thank you. In wonderful ways. And we, you've been on the show uh, before we talked about music. We have talked about and, music. And uh, I would encourage people to look back at the archive videos of the show. If you type in Margaret Ferris on my Facebook page, it should pop up with uh, her as a guest. And you can also check that out on my YouTube channel. Uh, but today, we're focusing on something that is much loved by many the mm-hmm. uh, pets. Pets are uh, just those incredible entities that assist us so much in I our like lives. I like that word, entities. Yes. Like those, those divine sparks, they as I are. call them. Fur animals, fur babies, as people call them, too. That's another passion of mine, are the pets. Yes. And I've spent my life um, had owning pets. Mm-hmm. And, um, and getting it, close to them. Getting close to them. And, and the feeling... Like, I think I'll probably start with the premise, do pets have souls? I'm just yes. going to say yes. Do pets have souls? Yes. And then, uh, you know, <laughs> just to to just do, occasionally I might try to do the other side of the coin, just because I think this is, a good it, we're, this is a question show. And certainly, write into Facebook, what do you think? Do pets mm-hmm. have souls? Why do you th- think that? And why do you know that? I'm, exactly. I'm curious yeah. to see uh, how people perceive that. So, so yeah, let's jump into okay. our topic for the day. So, you know... The word soul, I'm, I'm going to connect some other words to it. I'm going to use the word divine spark, essence, a source, a spirit body, um, even sensory soul, as mm-hmm. opposed to a human soul. So those are all words that, that um, I think of when, when we're talking about pets. And, um, you know, I, I looked up the topic on Internet like everyone else does, and there's so much. There's <laughs> just so much. And there's certainly the, the church's opinion. I, um, I have a little quote from uh, Pope John II, and I'm going to quote, I'll start off with his quote. He says, he says, embrace the spiritual nature of animals, reminding his followers that animals possess a soul. He said that. And that men must love and feel solidarity with our smaller brethren. Mm. And further on, he went to say uh, that yeah, animals I'm are as so near curious. to God as men are. So that's quite something. That's a turnaround for the Catholic Church. It is. So I, I love that quote. Um, and, you know, I read about the theologians, the, theologians, pardon me, biologists, psychologists, animal communicators. Everyone's been weighing in on the topic. And basically, um, there's no evidence to suggest that they don't have souls. 
they don't have some, some kind of essence. Yes. And I have some stories that I'm going to bring that are personal to me that um, I might want to share my experiences that, that certainly Love it. I, I feel that there's some kind of a divine spark in them. Uh, of course, we do want to mention an honor St. Francis. Oh, his, yeah. You, you got to talk about his, his love of the birds and his love of um, of, of nature. Francis de Assisi, right? I, uh, yes, and in the 1200s. So this really yeah. goes back a long ways. Um, so, um, yes, let me think. Um, I have a story. I'm going to start with a story about my, a bird, story. My, my bird cricket. Cricket is a yellow canary that I had way back in the 60s. This was maybe 70s. He had such a beautiful song. And I loved my cricket dearly. I think this is 70s, actually, come to think of it. And um, I was at music camp. And my sister was taking care of cricket at, uh, in my apartment, actually, in Toronto. And all of a sudden, I'm walking down, at, this is towards sunset, this dusty road. And in front of me, just right in front of me, came cricket flying. That oh, spirit body, not yes, the real cricket, right. although I thought it was the real cricket for a second. And he says, Mommy, Mommy, I'm dead. Mm. And he flew away. Right. Now, I'm trying to figure it out. I'm in a different state, so I don't understand... How did Cricket find me? Yeah. How did he know to tell me? How did I even know to get this? So uh, I stood in line for the telephone. It was camp, you know, out in the boondocks, and um, phoned my sister. And he died that day. That was like, I don't have language for this. No. no and my little no. beautiful Cricket came. He said goodbye to me. Jeez. So that was like the very first moments, like, oh, there is something here. Although I don't, I don't have the words for it. And... Um, that that stunned me. And I have a story about um, in the 80s when my Aunt Gwen died. And I wanted to honor my Aunt Gwen. I'd gone for a... Uh, oh, Aunt Gwen, come on in if you're here. <laughs> we're mediums. We'll let Aunt Gwen come in. Of course. Of <laughs> and course. Um, so I wanted to honor her, and I went for a walk in, uh, in, in the local um, field. And there was a beautiful patch of what I call purple thistles, purple heather. Mm -hmm. And I sat down. And in prayer, I just wanted to honor Aunt Gwen, and I wanted to pick the flowers. Nice. Now, here's the thing. There was bees there doing their job. They were collecting their pollen, and I wanted some of their flowers. So I asked the bees. I said, would you mind? Now, you know, would you mind? I, I'm, I'm in prayer, <laughs> so I'm not in my right mind here. I'm in my other prayerful, prayerful. divine, perfect yeah. prayerful mind. Yeah. And so... Um, I just decided I could pick the flowers. I'm, I'm picking over the bees mm -hmm. to go get to the flower that I want to honor Aunt Gwen. And I picked many flowers. As a matter of fact, I still have one of the cards left. I, I pressed them and sent cards out to the family. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember walking away. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I just talked to the bees and asked them not to sting me. Yeah. And could I have the flowers? Yes. And um, they never stung me. So that was like another moment of there's something going on that I don't have words for. Yeah, that's animal communication. That animal goes communication. On. And probably those of you out there that have done beekeeping or know about it know that sometimes that's what they do. They'll, they'll talk to the bees. There's mm -hmm. a, a place within themselves that they know they can communicate mm -hmm. with the animals. Oh, a little bit like Snow White, right? Like Snow White. And then she said, we know, Twitter. yeah, twittering with the birds and exactly. some of the bunnies I, and the deer. Yeah, I love that. I mean, Walt Disney really brought this he, to... He, Walt Disney, I love Walt Disney. I love Walt Disney. I think sometimes they take the personification of animals a little too far. I can understand that, yes. A little too far. <laughs> but at the same time, they brought a generation up to understand that yeah. one can communicate. And there's my, that's exactly. my Aunt Gwen story. Beautiful. I love that one. Yeah. And then you were so protected through that. And I knew did. that you were protected. And, and there was many bees. There was a couple dozen bees there. Yes. So that's my, uh, my bee story. Now, I, I have a, a, another story. Um, and this one comes in a dream. Ooh. I adopted this dog named Penny. And um, Penny was a beautiful black lab and um, I had to I had to leave the country I was moving to Ireland for that's another long story of course oh, and yeah. I, she had to find new new home yeah. and some people stepped forward we interviewed them and they owned the farm she was going to work with the cows this sounded like a really good placement for Penny so mm -hmm. um, Penny went to her new home and I moved to Ireland and um, I moved in July and sometime by October. Penny came to me in a dream, and she said to me, 
mommy, mommy, I was trying to come home to see you. And I, and she showed me in the dream her body lying by the side of the road. She'd been hit by a car. Oh. And she said she was coming home to see me. Now, again, I'm in Ireland, a whole different time zone. Yeah. And I, and it was so real. I thought, I don't know. So what I did was um, I phoned the people when I came home at Christmas. Lo and behold, Penny had been hit by a car. And she was on her way back to what would have been the road to the home. So that was another moment in my life about a dog and a dream yeah. that they communicate. I mean, cricket was in real time. Sure, sure. Uh, in yes. real time. Uh, Penny is communicating this to me in a dream. Again, acknowledging that they're no longer in their, their pet body. Right. right. That, that's, that was stunning to me. So, um, but Penny had, a, 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 um, well, she had a very interesting purpose in my life. Um, we'd moved to a house outside of Batavia on a uh, or dirt road, and it was very sparsely populated. And um, that was the beginning of me experiencing psychic phenomena, because mm -hmm. it turns out that house was more than likely built on an Indian burial ground. And what was fascinating, it was a brand, a brand new built house. The people had only been there barely a year and moved out, and we moved in. It's my husband and I. And um, he'd go off to work, and I tell you, it was have you seen the movie The Sixth Sense? Yes. <laughs> it was like that. I mean, they were calling out to me and touching me and mm -hmm. shaking my bed at night. And Penny's job was to bark anytime they started to come into the house or around me. And that was um, that was her being very protective of me. Mm -hmm. And how she knew that when I didn't know until I experienced the sensation. So not to dwell on that, but Penny, that was Penny's job. Well, sometimes dogs do have good radar. Mm -hmm. Poor spirit. Not all of them do. Not all. No. Not all dogs are healing dogs. Not all no. dogs are or healing therapy dogs. dogs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they, have, they have different things, but but certain dogs are able to really handle things in that way. And I think, I, and people talk about the divine purpose. I, I mean, I do feel that Penny came into me at that time in my life, um, a to protect me and warn me, and then the communication level, the love between her and I. Yes. She was my first puppy. My first puppy that I could call my puppy, not the family dog, right. my puppy. So no um, sharing, no sharing. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so that's the story of Penny. Um, if I, can, I have one more story to share. I'm uh, coming back from Ireland to spend a year there. I started having dreams about a cat. Now I'm not. A, I was not a cat person. No, no cats in our house. And this cat kept showing me its colors. It was brown and white and black. And I thought, well, make up your mind. I did not know about calico cats. Ah. And, and every time, I had the dream two or three times. And this cat, the dream kept getting more and more intense. And it said, come back, come back. So we'd moved back to the Batavia area. And I'd gotten the idea that maybe I'd find this cat at the shelter. Mm -hmm. So I'd already gone to the store. I remember, I didn't know what cats needed. I mean, what do you buy for a cat? I knew about dogs, so I had already bought all the things one needs for a cat, had them in my trunk, and off I go to the shelter, and um, I walk in the door, and the policeman is carrying this cat that's multicolored, and said, oh, take her, we're going to have to put her down soon. So that became Natasha, wow. from the dream. But you know me, I had to double check. I was always a person, I always liked to double check things. So I walked up and down the aisles, and that's a very sad thing, by the way, yeah. uh, <clears throat> to be in a shelter. And this, I was attracted to this dog who said to me, as plain as you are talking, take me, I don't want to die. And that's how I got my whiskey. My oh. whiskey George, didn't name him, but that was a great name for him. He was the color of whiskey. And he was the second dog after Penny. Yeah. And I'll talk about the adventure of that in a moment. But yes, there you go. <laughs> um, and Natasha taught me about cats. Mm. She she was a mouser. She wanted her freedom. She would not be an indoor cat. She was very clear about how she was going to live her life with me. Yeah. And I was just to go along with it. I mean, personality plus. Natasha's in charge. She was in charge, yeah. Well, so the, back to the, uh, that idea of... Um, cats and having souls in Egypt, there was mm -hmm. that understanding that they had that mm -hmm. kind of special, yeah, almost like godlike. They they, <laughs> they were guards. Yeah, they were guards yes. in the temple. 
dogs too. Mm -hmm. My cats yes. also. Cats a little bit more. Uh, I think they were even held to a higher standard. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, and, and some cats carry that on in their demeanor yes. today. <laughs> she, she was queen. <laughs> um, even um, when when the, Natasha was first one to go through the door, the dogs had to wait. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I can still see her little tail in the air. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I, I could talk about, I might as well talk about whiskey. Cause Go I, I brought him up because he, he was the one that, he was a great communicator. Now, now we're getting into true communication. I mean, he would, I, I, I it's, it sounds crazy, of course, but he, when he wanted a chewy, when he wanted out, when he wanted his food, he didn't have to bark. He looked at me. You see, this was different. Penny mm -hmm. was a barker. Mm -hmm. But this is a dog that looked into my eyes and was like talking to me. Like telepathically. Tele telepathically, yes. Yeah. And uh, he was he was just a, a great communicator. So, um, again, I lived out in the country. And where I lived, there was no leash laws. There fields and fields were up by the lake this time. Mm -hmm. So I tried a little game with Penny. Uh, or with Whiskey, pardon me. He loved the car. So I would say when I was going to go shopping, I would send him right from here, third eye. Mm -hmm. Okay, Whiskey, I'm going in the car. You want to come? He'd come from miles. His tongue would be hanging out. He'd run. It took him about 10 minutes to get to me. And he'd come and he'd jump in the car yeah. to go with the, to the store with me. And that, none of that was verbally done. Not, none. So getting him to the vet was another story. So I would try to pretend to him the same thing, same, same everything that I could figure out. We're going in, we're going in the car to the store. We're really going to the vet. He wouldn't come. He knew you were lying. See, that's he, the thing. He, People can lie, but energy doesn't. That's right. <laughs> he knew I was trying to make up a fit to get him in the car to the vet. And he was a tricky dog to get to the vet. Yeah. And, and, uh, yeah. We always had to, have, we always had the morning appointments because if he was out the door, he would yeah. not come back. Uh, that's so, a good plan. <laughs> that, that, that was my, my risky. Um, and he, um, he was another teacher because, uh, he, uh, he got hit by a car. Mm. Despite all of my good care, he ran across the street to say hello to the kids, got hit by the car, broke his pelvis. And um, this is when he was six months old. I'm backing my story up a bit. And I really thought I was going to have to put him down. But a friend came to me and said, no, you can work him through this. Mm. So I taught Whiskey how to, to walk. Friend came over. We got on the back legs to show him how to walk. That was the whole introduction to the healing, mm. to herbs, to vitamins, right. to chiropractic, to acupuncture. I mean, Whiskey had all of it. and But it was such a... It was a whole introduction to the whole healing. Mm, mm. I, I mean, at the same time, I'm learning about animal communication, but now I'm learning about the herbs and um, and the power of herbs yeah. and, and for healing whiskey. And he did walk, and he did run again. So that was um, that was quite something. It's a success story there, absolutely. And and so it, it shows that sometimes animal pets come into our life mm -hmm. uh, for healing, for learning, to mm -hmm. encourage us. On the path, and those, and the same thing with people. When certain people come in, I, I agree. Uh, they do. Uh, that they, they uh, start something. They're a catalyst of this mm -hmm. or that. And it's good that you recognize, yeah, what what you learn from those relationships. Uh, another story about um, whiskey. A different house. Um, he, we went through different places together, which that's what really bonds you is when you're moving with your pet. Uh -huh. And. and um, it was, I remember it was a full moon. I had to get out in the woods. I just moved in the day before and I was walking around the woods. Now this sounds a little crazy for me, but you know, I was in a suburb, but it was a forever wild situation. I'm walking around the woods at midnight with the, with the full moon, but somehow I got twisted mm. and I didn't know where the house was. Sure. Sure. And so I'm, I'm, now I'm in a little bit of a panic. This is before cell phones. Right. All of a sudden through the trees, um, I see a light go on. I thought, oh, humans, I'll go there. Then the light would go off, and I'd go, oh, dear. Next thing you know, the light would go back on. Like a willow o -wisp. Yeah. <laughs> and so I kept moving towards the light, mm -hmm. and I came out of the clearing, and there I was in my backyard. Whew. But there was Whiskey, standing under the motion sensor light. Oh. Guiding me home. 
he knew. He'd been in the woods with me, but he'd run away. Oh, well, I yeah. thought he'd run away. No, no, he had run home to go get the motion sensor light to get me home. That's, that's a cute story. I, 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 I love, love it, it. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so those are just some of my um, you know, some I'm, of the stories. I can imagine, you know, other, other people have amazing stories about how they have felt that beautiful bond and connection mm -hmm. with their pets. Uh, even policemen with their canine unit dogs. That's right, they know. You know, they have to work together as a team. Like, they they are co-workers mm -hmm. in that sense. Uh, or a sheepdog and, and how a sheepdog can herd, herd the sheep. In their, in, and, it's in their instinct. Yes. It's in their instinct. It is yeah, in their yeah, instinct. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I have happened that I had watched, uh, I think, a 60 Minutes uh, episode about a man who is a psychologist who has a dog who's been he's been training that dog mm -hmm. and that dog can identify thousands of items all he every item has a name mm -hmm. and all he has to do is say that name and that dog can find that yes. particular toy yeah. out of thousands I've, of I've options seen this. yes and uh he says that this dog has about a the equivalent of a two-year-old's mm -hmm. Understand maybe a little bit better in terms of vocabulary, mm -hmm. number of words that it, rec it recognizes, and then can go find the toy. But it's kind of interesting to have that. How happen. do they know that? How do they know How that? How do they know that? We talk about Coco, um, the ape, the gorilla, yes. the, with the yes. vocabulary, mm -hmm. signing, mm -hmm. learning to sign, yes, learning to sign. And it, yet there is um, a sense that there energy is different from human energy. You know, mm -hmm. As a medium, when I connect with mm -hmm. humans, it has a particular kind of vibrational frequency versus angels versus pets. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times with pets, uh, I'll get a sense of them on the floor uh, or what they're doing around my legs. Occasionally a cat will jump up on my, my chair. <laughs> it just mm -hmm. depends. Uh, but most, most of the time, if it, if I, get pets they're in peripheral vision first mm -hmm. and then they'll move uh forward mm -hmm. sometimes and maybe sprawl out or i uh, find they come in very fast. show their behavior in a yeah. certain way but their essence feels different would you mm -hmm. agree with that i'm going to i'm going to agree with it yeah. It, it, it is, it, and you know, the other thing, people cry more for their pets sometimes than for sometimes, their mom and dad. Yeah. Like, I've had people, like, their mother and their <laughs> father and their, their spouse. Grandparents, yeah. And everybody. But the dog and then also the in. dog comes in and is like, oh, oh I know. <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's a love that is a knowing of a love and a yeah. bond. Yeah. And whatever we call that love, I'm calling it a soul for now. Um, yeah. It's, it's, own, it's own essence. I feel the animals, uh, pets, they help us to understand unconditional love a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is easier. They, they don't just speak of the language, so you can't have a lot of disagreements in that regard mm -hmm. uh, versus humans. <laughs> they talk back. <laughs> but there is that sense of the unconditional love that you experience with a pet, that is practice, so that mm -hmm. you can take that and what you know and experience mm -hmm. from that and extrapolate it to humans that are in your life, too. Mm -hmm. I agree. It's a learning ground for people. Well, actually, going back to Natasha, she, mm -hmm. she would argue with me. Oh yeah, they they do they can balk about but, things. Yes, sure, absolutely. And she she made an incredible. Um, they make pictures. They, I, I went to an animal communicator class and I found out that they they read our pictures. That's oh. how they know when we're getting ready to travel. We haven't mm -hmm. even taken the suitcases out, but we're starting to do little things. Uh -huh. They already pick up the energy is different. They know something's going on. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. the, before you're going to take the dog for the walk, they're already at the door. Yep. Yeah. They they know, mm -hmm. and you haven't even gone for the leash. Right. You know, they they have a even if you go different times of the day. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, even I know. Even if you like mess the routine up. I've tried know. that on purpose just to see as an experiment. Yes, they do. Yeah, they they they, they read our minds. And and, and I mean, there are probably energetic cues, physical cues, of course, mm -hmm. but energetic cues that we give off that they're able to perceive. Mm -hmm. And um, it's it's funny because some some pets are extremely intelligent, uh, or so, mm -hmm. some pets are like what I call doofus. <laughs> <laughs> do oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. It just depends uh, on them and. And they'll confess if they were a digger or if they were always a slabber thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. It just, they all have those. And sometimes they'll talk about the ways that what they noticed in their life and living with that human. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what, 
and they'll they'll talk about ways that they're still showing up for them. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, maybe it's, you know, you felt me when I jumped on the bed the other day. Right. To my, show. To that, show. I was, that I was mm -hmm. here with you. And, and I think it's just beautiful that that continues. I know there's a, uh, that sense that, well, animals don't have souls. And so I think what Margaret and I are both saying is, is they do have an essence mm -hmm. that is of a different consistency. Mm -hmm. Uh, fabric, spiritual fabric. But it from, is, it's going to be divine. At it the is. Same time. I mean, they have an aura. They have, they have those kinds of uh, abilities. And they have thoughts. They have thoughts. Mm -hmm. And uh, some people wonder, like, are they going to see their pet in heaven? Oh, I've read about that too. Yeah. Actually, talking about that actually yeah. leads me to the, a story about Kaylee. Okay. Um, we all know we come to a time, especially with our dogs and cats, when <clears throat> they can't sustain life in their yes. physical body. Pardon me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Talking about Kaylee. So yeah. my friend Jim and I, it was time for Kaylee to go to sleep. We'd taken her to the vet. And um, we're at the moment where it's already happened. She said she, her, her, her heart has stopped. So we're at the vets and we're weeping away as, as we do because it was our beloved Kaylee. When we get out, her soul, I call her soul, her essence, was in the car running around. And, and the dichotomy of we're in there still crying over the dead body. Yeah. She's already free in the car. Yeah. Joyful. Yeah. Joyful. Joyful. So, and I <laughs> and I got out to a restaurant. We parked the car so we could see. Sure. And the car was lighting up and lighting up. You could see her running around sp spirit wise in the car. Mm -hmm. They do not regret. They don't it, have that. Yeah. I, I mean, when I talked about cricket, it was very, Mummy, mummy, I'm dead, and flew away. There was no sadness when Penny came to me. No sadness. It was communication that no longer in the physical body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they don't. I don't think they have the the same sadness that we have. They don't, and they don't always remember all that happened at the time of the passing. Sometimes the, they the do. Right, Sometimes the they, they don't. Yeah. You can't guarantee that they'll be like. Oh yeah, I was a pain, or I'm, like, they might not indicate those things. Yeah, they might. Not. Sometimes they will indicate where a cancer tumor was, or, or uh, if they got hit by a car, mm -hmm. or, um, you know, their favorite toys. They can describe those. Sometimes they'll do that. Yes. But it, you know, in terms of their passing, they're usually just very grateful. That There's I, a gratitude there is, that yeah. I can feel from them about things because they don't understand suffering. Yeah, it's not really in how they work mm -hmm. and how they function uh, in in their consciousness, mm -hmm. shall we say. I agree. And so it's a beautiful thing to know that once um, an animal has passed, they, they do go to the other side and they do visit. Um, I've had people in spirit tell, tell me, uh, to, to tell the client or sitter, yes, I, I've got this dog with me. And this dog, uh, I don't worry, I'm taking care of it, no problems. I when had you, the same experience. When, when you cross and it's your turn to be here, then it's not even dog their dog necessarily. And yeah. Right, but yeah. they're, they're, it's not like there are a bunch of pets whimpering in, in heaven. No. It doesn't work that way. And, and you know, I also <laughs> say, and I, I found this, no dog or cat, our, our loving domestic animals are not alone in heaven. They are with someone, yes. whether that someone knew them or not. Yeah. And, and my, what I hear from spirit is if the person, what we call the sitter, mm -hmm. receiving the reading, loved the pet, then the person in spirit loves to take care of that pet. Yes. Because that's the, that's, the, that's the connection. And the taking care of, I don't want you to think that they, are, oh, yes, I need to walk them or get no. some litter box. It's not that kind of care. It's yeah. a different kind of, hey, we're, we're It's an okay. energetic vibration of togetherness. Yes. Beautifully stated. Thank you. Yes. Yes. That's how, how that translates. And, and sometimes uh, spirit will indicate uh, that the person, the, the, the dead, <laughs> the dead dog or the dead cat, the one that's passed, will talk about, uh, current animals. Current yes. Pets. Oh yes. And they'll, yes, sometimes they'll tell on them. Sometimes yeah. they'll be like, I didn't like so-and-so. <laughs> you, you gave, you gave so-and-so my favorite toy. Yes. Yeah. Or, or you know how, um, the, the current dog has been like 
barking at nothing. Well, that's me. <laughs> I've, I've had that many, many times. So it's really cool. And you know, I've actually seen, um, I got another quick story. When I went to pick up my Kaylee dog, no, Doodles, wrong dog. Okay, okay. Doodles. doodles. So um, sometimes the dogs just simply found their way to my house. You know, I rescued dogs, but this time I was going to get a puppy. And I knew I wanted a girl. Mm -hmm. And the lady brought a, two boxes of puppies. One was boys, one was girls. And um, I knew I was going to pick one of them. And there was probably about five or six puppies in this box. Mm -hmm. And coming from, from my shoulder, I'll remember this till, coming off my shoulder was this spinning vortex of white light. Almost like, you know how tink, how they portray Tinkerbell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tinkerbell. You know? And it goes mm -hmm. zoop, 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 and, but it's spinning, yeah. the light. So this ball, I'm going to show you, it's about this big, if you can see that on the video. Um, this big. It was spinning, spinning, spinning on my shoulder, came into where the box of puppies was, went around the puppies, okay, and went in one puppy. And that puppy lit up like a Christmas tree. And I knew that was my puppy. <laughs> Got that puppy. Put it in my jacket. It was um, the day before Christmas. So it was cold. Oh, yeah. And that was my doodles. And that was a very another strong, strong communicator. Strong yeah. love. So, yeah. How do you pick, pick your puppy? Yeah. How do you pick, <laughs> how do, Yeah. I've never done it that way. And, I, again, I talk about my... I have to talk about my friend Jim. He was very sensitive to animals. And um, we went... Uh, Sparky number one had passed. And we were going to go get Sparky number two. He couldn't think of any other name than Sparky. So we Sparky named Sparky one. Sparky one, <laughs> Sparky contest. two. So in the car with us was the spirit of Sparky number one. Mm -hmm. He was going to go help us get Sparky number two because he was going to go in. Oh, now I guess we're getting into reincarnation here. <laughs> okay, well, we'll diverse a little bit. So again, we're out in the country trying to find this place. And uh, it's the dark road, dark at night. And uh, we drive past the driveway, and Sparky number one says, oh, you missed the driveway. Turn back. So sure enough, he was right. Mm -hmm. You could hear him. I don't, Jim was very close to Sparky. So we turned the car around. It was an impression. Yeah. An impression. Oh, you've missed it. It wasn't quite like that, but you got to go back. There was a pulling back energy, mm -hmm. is how he, he d described it. So we drove back. We went up the driveway. Yes, sure enough. And um, there was puppies there. And Jim was handing me puppies. And we were trying to puppy see after puppy, after puppy after puppy. And at one point, the energy changed. And the puppy, because I knew Sparky number one, started, it became warm. Mm. The body became warm. I don't mm. know how to, warm. And came up to kiss me, kiss me all over me. Went, he got in. Mm. Sparky number two. Mm. Mm. So that we could, of course, have another show about that. <laughs> I have many a story on that, but that was amazing to yeah. me. Again, we talk about, I, I have to use the word divine essence, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. E even the little bird that Jim and I tried to save um, that was wounded, we prayed all night when he was in a little shoebox in our shed um, to stay warm. Mm -hmm. And in the morning, um, he didn't make it. Jim saw the angel come to get the bird. Mm -hmm. I, when I looked down at the body, it was empty. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the same. Mm -hmm. And it was like the essence of that bird had gone to spirit. God had come to get the little bird. Yeah. So that was um, pretty amazing to me. You know, it's funny as you were talking about the bird. I remember it because uh, at one point I had a pet bird. And uh, all of a sudden, I just, the, the bird was on the bottom of a cage. And I, I, was, I was young and I was like, what is going on? And then I, I, was, I was like, I don't know whether to touch the bird like it was it was like that kind of it was all happening so fast mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden i saw its beak open mm -hmm. and i saw its spirit essence leave its body like that <laughs> i could actually see it spirit made sure that you, you saw that and moment. I, and i i was like yeah there was no warning <laughs> there was no warning. but i i saw that and so that's why I do believe that they have a spirit essence. It's unlike a spirit, a human soul, because those look different when mm -hmm. they're leaving the body mm -hmm. as well. Yes. I don't know how to say yes. that to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know it when you know it, guys. <laughs> you know, that's the other thing. You know it when you know it. Yeah. Because it, it's a connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Be it exactly. with a person or be it with a pet. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it's just so special 
when we have those opportunities to be there for them, to be mm -hmm. present for them, mm -hmm. to the best of our ability. That's right. And that uh, usually someone's dog or cat, I, they were, I, I can't think of even one instance where they've come back and yelled at the client or sitter I, for what I have, they did. I have none of that. They usually understand. And, they usually understand. And, and it's the person has learned the lesson mm -hmm. for whatever reason. Sometimes it's a big yeah. time lesson. Yeah, big time lesson, yes. I had a client who uh, the dog had been left in the hot car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, just wrecked her. So yeah, madly. wrecked her with the guilt. Yeah, no, just, and just like, she's had, had to go through a lot of therapy mm -hmm. <laughs> for it. And it's, it's hor horrifying and... And at the same time, that that dog did not did not hold did, did not, not hold, hold that because it, it once they're out of their physical body, they're so free, mm -hmm. and and and, mm -hmm. and they they don't hold that. I, I, yeah. That's exactly how I feel about that. No, not that we're saying people should go ahead and kick no. the dog or no, do no, other no, things, no, no, no. but it's like they just they have such a forgiving spirit, if mm -hmm. you will. They have a, a divine love. Pure yes, love. It's pure a, love. Even if they do traumas. People could say cats are the same thing. I mean, if, if people who work with uh, pets that have had trauma, mm -hmm. and, you know, it can be painstaking to work a pet through trauma. It, it is. Uh, yeah, when they be. have had yeah. abuse or, or mm -hmm. something that has really shaken them. Uh, so we're not saying that that isn't significant mm -hmm. on some level, but... There is another side to it. I totally agree. Yes, yes. Well, this is great. This is great. Really yeah, I think I think I've <laughs> done most of my my stories, um, but you know, here's another very simple one. When even when your dog goes out to get groomed, mm -hmm. the whole house changes. Oh yeah. You know, I mean, you know, they're coming back. It's going to be in a couple hours. You're going to go get them, but all of a sudden, the vibration of the house is different. This is true. Um, I'm not this. Uh, I mean, even greater vibration when they've actually passed. Mm -hmm. um, um, yes, of course, we've lost the what I call the routine of, yeah. of taking care of a pet. But there's more than that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's mm -hmm. a there's an essence that's gone out of the house. The house has vibrationally changed when they passed. That's um, my experience. Yes, and and I think it's good if you if if you notice the difference. It's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. If you're grieving, just know that that's yeah. not a, necessarily a bad thing. They They're, will come and visit. Mm -hmm. um, it's easier to get through to you if, if you're not in the thick of it, mm -hmm. in the thick of the grief. Uh, but sometimes mm -hmm. dogs will come right up and nose up under my elbow and move it. Mm -hmm. uh, the ones in spirit will will do that. I um, heard them bark. Yeah, Every once so bark. Yeah, yeah. If they were barkers, they'll come through with that, or they're hollers. Oh, yeah. And every once in a while, you get that psychic phenomenon that your sitter can hear that. Yes, yeah, sometimes that and, happens. And that is such a cool. great um, confirmation. Yeah. Yeah. I had one uh, strange thing that happened. Uh, I was connecting with this lady's cat, and I said, its tongue is disgusting. <laughs> and, and I said, it looks bedraggled and just pathetic. I, I don't know how else to say that to her, right? Yeah. Kind of blunt, but she said, "Oh, absolutely! I know exactly what you're talking and about." So she knew it was her this pet. cat was missing half the lower half of its tongue. Uh, was look, did look wretched and bedraggled, and she had to hand feed this cat. Yeah, yeah. for years, years, years. And that was that's what we call an identifier. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> that was I was like, I don't need to see that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> Gosh. Yeah. I was thought, what had happened to this cat? And it's something that she. It became such a big part of her life. She actually missed being able to take care of this cat mm -hmm. on that kind of like baby bird level. So, so that 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 dog, that cat, was there to teach her compassion. Very much so. Teach her compassion and care. Mm -hmm. yeah. And some people they need a pet to care for. I don't mm -hmm. know how else to say that, but they like need mm -hmm. something to care about outside of themselves. Mm -hmm. That is uh, not human and interactive in a human sense, mm -hmm. but on a, on a dog essence level mm -hmm. or a cat essence level or any other kind of pet. Mm -hmm. We focus on the dead, dogs and cats because those are the primaries. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's not to say other pet, pets are, are valuable. But I have to say, um, guinea pigs don't tend to come through like those. I don't of, get. I don't get. I don't get, get those as much. No, yeah. I get birds. Yeah, occasionally I get birds. birds yeah. yeah, it's usually a dog or cat. Yeah, that, that's I do get rabbits though. Uh, yeah, I do get rabbits, 
And they yeah. come, they don't have much to say. It's just, a, they just come very sweetly. Yeah, that's the other thing. Sometimes pets don't talk much. No, they don't know what to say. So They're just there. They're present. It, it, just as far as I, I work as a medium, if people are wind, I, we're going to focus more on humans. Like that's, mm -hmm. that's how it is for me. Would you say it's the same thing for you? It's not like a pet will take over, over a whole session necessarily. I, they will take up a, a, a portion, a portion, a portion. But they usually aren't the whole mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. So I, I, we come back to the topic that they are not sad. They're at peace. Yes. They, they are joyful to be released from their physical body, especially when they, when they've gotten over. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, They're and, like, and, it's time. Don't feel bad. I was exactly. time. I'm glad yeah. you let me go. That was what was merciful. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, they will. They will indicate that very, yeah. very strongly. So I, I think that's important for people who are listening to understand yeah. that um, even if it's early, like uh, for instance, uh, Cricket was a young bird, but he still was joyful that he was in spirit. Yes. Because he didn't know he didn't live long. He didn't have yeah. that language. He just knew he was free. Isn't it funny? You know how they calculate uh, age of dogs. Mm -hmm. What is it like? Seven years. Seven years. Like that? Right. And I, I think that. They don't. A dog really doesn't sense it in that way either. No, they don't sense the years. Yeah. Although, if you want to try and explain to them, I'm I'm trying this system. When uh, if if you have to go away, yeah. um, they understand the sun rising and the, and the sun setting. Mm -hmm. That's that's a marker of time, and so if, so if I'm going to be gone overnight, or I'll show them. I'll make the picture to them. Okay, sun's going to rise, sun's going to set, sun's going to rise, and I'll be back. And I show them walking through the door. Uh huh. Uh huh. I, I'd like to think that they all understand that. Right. Um, I've tried that system for years to show them I'm coming back. Right. You're at least making the effort. Yeah. And, and, and you know, um, just talking about um, the recent earth, earthquake in Turkey, how mm -hmm. terrible that is. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's reports that the animals were different a couple of days beforehand. The tsunami that we had. Um, in um, India, mm -hmm. the, the, the animals were heading for the hills. That's true. He, heading up to higher level, and um, they sensed it before days, days in the shift in the vibration. Yes. Of, of. So we do know that our, our animals are very great um, in terms of I, I'm going to call it a divine spark. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, just a, uh, I was having this thought. Um, not all animals, as I said, are healing animals. Not all animals have it together. Mm -hmm. Some of them really need humans to help steer them. Mm -hmm. So, like, sometimes it's about the owner, if you want to use that word, mm -hmm. owner uh, getting their energy together so that then their dog or, or cat can be of ease in mind themselves because mm -hmm. sometimes they will pick up the energy of their owners that's true if the owner it tends to be more anxious mm -hmm. of if the owner tends to to be you know have that kind of uh, controlly kind of energy mm -hmm. that's not a good alpha mode mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then the the dog or cat may start to act out Mm -hmm. Right. That's right, and and then they, they get themselves into trouble. And right? they get into themselves because all they're doing is mirroring their environment. Right, and yeah. so they can uh, amplify energy and uh, get into bite mode. They can get into those kinds mm -hmm. of behaviors, and, and that's probably a good pet owner would want to understand why they're doing it. Yeah, well, so you have to train yourself first. Yes, you do. So then you can work through and train with them because mm -hmm. they. You know, as sensitives, Margaret and I are both sensitives, mm -hmm. and so, you know, we, we've had to work on uh, mm -hmm. how we might amplify or magnify the energy that's around us, too, mm -hmm. and so sometimes that's the case mm -hmm. for animals. Yeah. So just keep that in mind if you are, you have experienced behavior issues mm -hmm. with pets, just know that your energy, when you set the tone, really helps them as an essence, as that's an energy right. as well. Right. So, um... And, and if, uh, this is exactly it. If you have a problem you're worrying about, there's something about you may reassure, have to reassure your pet. Mm -hmm. You can Absolutely. still worry about it, but you may need to reassure them. Yes. Because they don't have the language to quite understand. They, exactly. they feel the energy of it. Yes. Yeah. And just a, a quick note about uh, about healing animals, because mm -hmm. I, I think there are uh, dogs and cats that do have that a bit more. Yeah. And so they may try to... Uh, lay on the area that's hurt mm -hmm. 
uh, they may come up and lean against the, the mm -hmm. person's leg if they're, and this is, can be a, for a physical reason or emotional reason or That's right. energetic reason of some, some sort. So they are responsive to those mm -hmm. occasions. I, I, I think that um, dogs especially like to have a job, oh, even yeah. if it's as simple as guarding the purse. Mm -hmm. Or in one of my dogs, making sure there's no squirrels within half a mile of my house. That was a job. That was definitely a job. <laughs> when they get paid boring kibble. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I know time's going by so fast. All right. Any last thoughts that you'd like to share with folks about do pets have souls? I think um, I just want to acknowledge um the humanity of people. We only hear about the bad pet owners, but for, for the most part, people are good. People oh, love their pets. Oh, yeah. People respect nature. Mm -hmm. I, I want to end on that kind of note. I, I agree with you. I think yeah. that is an excellent note to end on mm -hmm. because uh, there is so much beauty and hope in the world uh, between humans and uh, between humans and pets. That's right. Yeah. And that we should focus on, on those good things mm -hmm. and, and not like the occasional bad apple. That's right. Uh, color, 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 yeah. all of that. Because yeah. uh, we we have to live in that space of hope. Uh, you know, a lot of times with dogs and cats, they're just living in the moment. They they teach us live in the Actually, moment. Actually, that's a good point also to end on. They do live in the moment. And there's only now. There's only now. That's there's right. only now. So get focused in the now and be hopeful in the now. And uh, pay attention to what you can learn from your pets and, and what energy you may be giving off to them. Mm -hmm. And how you maybe want to... to um, Make that the most positive that it can be mm -hmm. and appreciate them for the comfort and love that they, unconditional mm -hmm. love that they offer you. Yes, very much. The affection can be so strong mm -hmm. and just know that that love never dies and will continue forevermore. In spirit. I, I mean, I've had uh, pets that have come through and people have said, I can't believe that one died 40 years ago. Still Are they there. still with me? Yes. 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 yes and and one final thing, I do believe that if you want to be reunited with your pet, yeah. if you want that, that, that they're waiting for you in heaven. Oh yeah, and it has to be uh, a mutual, a mutual, yes, uh, a mutual uh, des desiring of that and mm -hmm. of ener energetic, and that's the same thing with humans too. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, human spirits that they um, will both agree. Yes, mm -hmm. we want to. We, we want to continue want on to continue an energetic this. level together. Exactly. Yeah. So there's an agreement, a soul agreement that happens. I like that, a soul agreement. Yeah, yeah. that happens yeah. in those moments. Yeah. Well, this has been great, Margaret. Thank I you. love it. Do pets great have talk. souls? And I see we have lots of comments. Yeah, coming lots in. of great comments. Yes. And, and you know, keep them coming as you as you will as you will about this, and just know that they will find ways to connect with you. You have to sometimes be very patient. Because mm -hmm. they may not always come through the way you think they should or mm -hmm. the energy that they should. A lot of the expectation just has to, you know, be put to the door so that you can be open and really engage in the time that's correct for them and for you. Mm -hmm. uh, on last note, I just want to let people know that uh, Monday night, I have the start of a new round of my Monday night mediumship development circle program. It's a nine week circle series. And you can sign up for that on my website, willowwhite.com. Uh, so you can take a look at, at things. It's a weekly development circle. We meet live on Zoom. Uh, so wherever you are, you, you can uh, tune in and learn with me and uh, learn with our very special group and be able to give and receive messages and practice no, that's mediumship lovely. skills. That's lovely, yes. Uh, additionally, I have a three-month mediumship immersion program coming up. And this is more geared toward your intermediate level. Uh, if you are uh, a beginner and you've never, you don't even know how you connect with spirit, this, that particular immersion program is not for you. But if you're ready, you have a sense of how you connect with spirit and you'd like to become more consistent, we're going to go into a deep dive into the medium's message. So we're going to deconstruct what it's uh, like in that reading and in that message and how to connect with uh, spirit in deeper ways and really amplify those mediumship skills. And of course, it's always about spiritual unfoldment. The more right. we learn about ourselves uh, as mediums and as healers, the more we learn about ourselves and our 
in the in our lives. of life, the fabric of life. Yes, yeah, perfect. Of life. Perfect. So um, please tune in next week. I'll have another great guest on the show. Thanks, everyone. God bless. God bless. Thank you, Margaret. Bye-bye.